We previously discussed that an iterable must be the last thing given in the header of a for loop, and essentially an iterable is something that returns one element at a time, and we've used lists and tuples as iterables, but lists and tuples are a special kind of iterable. They are known as sequences, and let's discuss sequences for a bit. And sequences are a well-ordered collection of data, and also sequences have a underscore underscore get item underscore underscore method. I said lists and tuples are sequences, so let's check out the underscore underscore get item underscore underscore method for a list, and here's a simple list. Let's go with x list is equal to the string 1, the string 2, and the expression 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now let's use the dir function and see the methods that this list has and one of them is the get item method and I'll forget about saying the double underscore let's see what help has to say about this method so let's say help xlist dot the get item method well this is rather cryptic but what it's saying is the get item method with some argument y is the same as if we just put that argument y within square brackets with the sequence. Let's put that to the test. We could write x list with an index of 1, and that should give us the second element of x list. But it looks like we could also write x list dot this get item method with an argument of 1, and we also get the second element from that list. And clearly the square brackets are much easier to write than this double underscore get item double underscore and then the argument within brackets. I should note that using square brackets and the get item method are only synonymous when it comes to recalling an element of a sequence. If you're trying to assign a value to a sequence, then you can't use the get item method. Instead of a list, let's create a string, and we'll assign to the identifier s the string hello. And what methods does a string have? And we've checked these out before, but let's go ahead and do this again. And if we look closely here, we see that one of the methods is the getItem method. So if I set s dot the double underscore getItem double underscore with an argument or index of 1, then I get the letter E, the character that's offset 1 from the start of the string. And that should be synonymous with specifying an index within square brackets. So let's check that out. Let's write S with an index of 1. And sure enough, we get the E again. And similarly, if we had S dot this get item method with an index of 0, we get the first character, h, or s, with 0 in square brackets, we get the first character, h. So this is telling us that a string is a sequence, and keep in mind that all sequences are iterables, but the converse is not true. Not all iterables are sequences. In any case, given this, that must mean that strings are iterables. It's a sequence, so it must be an iterable, and then we could use it in the header of a for loop. Let's put that to the test. Let's do this. Let's say for item in s, this string, let's try to print whatever the item is, and if we do that, hitting return twice, we get each character from the string. The string's a well-ordered collection of data. It has this get item method and it returns a character for each iteration of the for loop. Now let's write another for loop. Let's say for i in the range of the length of the string s and this time let's print perhaps the index and s with the index in square brackets and hitting return twice we get the indices and the corresponding character. So lists, tuples, and strings are all 
sequences. They're all iterables. However, like tuples and unlike lists, strings are immutable. We cannot change the characters of a string. To demonstrate this, we know that the first character in this string is an H, but if we try to assign something to that, let's say we want to change the first character to a Y, then we get this error that a string does not support item assignment. The things we'll discuss in the next couple of videos pertain to what's known as slices and negative indices, and as we'll see, they pertain to lists and tuples and strings, and as a matter of fact, any form of sequence, but they're a little easier to demonstrate with strings, so that's why we've introduced strings as sequences here. Later on, we'll have much more to say about strings, but for now, just keep in mind that sequences have a get item method, and because of that, they are well-ordered collections of data. We get a particular element by giving an index within square brackets, or if we wanted to be a bit more verbose, we could use this get item method with the particular index. So with that, we'll stop here and move on to the topic of negative indices.